As I reflect on the year 2020, it was a year of challenges and hardships. So many people in our city and across the world struggled and lost loved ones due to COVID-19. Despite the pandemic, our city stayed strong and most importantly, we never lost hope. As you'll see, we faced our challenges while continuing to provide citizens with outstanding programs and service. And now I present to you the state of the city. In 2020, these were the signs of the times. At the onset of the coronavirus, the city made every effort to keep staff and citizens safe by following Orange County's mandatory mask mandate. To protect our frontline workers and visitors to City Hall, a wall was constructed to limit public access inside the building and to follow CDC social distancing guidelines. Plexiglass barriers were installed in city buildings as an added safety precaution to keep city employees safe. To assist residents with financial hardships related to COVID-19, the city waived water bill late fees for three months. The city also absorbed the cost of the third-party credit card convenience fees, which helped citizens hit hard by the coronavirus. To further assist, utility bill payment plans were available to citizens in need. The year 2020 will go down in history for the two pandemics of COVID-19 and racial injustice protest. Against this national backdrop, the city of Okoye acknowledged a monumental chapter in our history. In remembrance of the 100-year anniversary of the 1920 Okoye Election Day Massacre, the city's Human Relations Diversity Board presented a four-day educational symposium. In the spirit of truth and reconciliation, the city recognized and formally apologized to the descendants of the victims of the Alcohi Massacre. A historical marker was erected on Lakeshore Drive to tell the story and honor the victims that lost their lives and property on November 2nd, 1920. While the city reckoned with the past, we remained focused on our future. The city forged ahead with major projects, including the groundbreaking ceremony for the new city hall. Located at the northeast corner of the intersection of Blueford Avenue and McKee Street, the site for the new facility is just two blocks south of the current City Hall. The new City Hall is a central part of the city's historic downtown redevelopment master plan. The three-story building will provide an efficient, modern space for people to engage in business with the city. With 46,552 square feet, the new City Hall will bring city services under one roof with extra space to accommodate future growth. The nearly $22 million project is expected to be completed by May 2022. The city completed several major projects in 2020, including our State Road 50 landscape beautification. The city's Community Redevelopment Agency partnered with the Florida Department of Transportation to beautify the medians on State Road 50 between State Road 429 and Good Homes Road. The nearly three miles of median plantings include over 17,000 shrubs and ground covers and 62 trees. Florida Department of Transportation reimbursed the city over $650,000. The city continued efforts to green up with the refreshed landscape in the medians on McGuire Road south of the Turnpike. To maintain proper plant growth and health, workers replaced the soil installed a water-efficient irrigation system, and added flowering trees, shrubs, grasses, and ground covers. Several new businesses put down their roots in the city's 50 West Redevelopment District. The city was pleased to welcome new eateries, Huey Magoo's, Dickie's Barbecue, and Waffle House. Other new businesses opened their doors in the city's 50 West area, which covers more than 1,000 acres along the State Road 50 corridor. And, the city looks forward to welcoming several new restaurants, including Tijuana Flats, Sonny's Barbecue, and Mr. and Mrs. Crab. In 2020, commercial growth continued at steady pace. With more than 100,000 square feet, West Oak Cell Storage is under construction and will offer office, retail space, and climate-controlled storage space. Vermeer Trinity will provide retail, office, and warehouse space covering more than 65,000 square feet. The city's residential developments continue to expand. Located on Tommen Boulevard, the new Inspiration Town Center is underway and includes 90 townhomes and four office and retail buildings. 
Arden Park North expanded its footprint with 366 new residential lots, and a total of 364 new townhomes are laying their foundation in Okoe, including Arden Landing, formerly known as Sierra Place, Greens at Forest Lake, and Prairie Meadows. One of the most well-known and highly traveled roads in the city in West Orange County is now a little longer. The city held a ribbon-cutting ceremony for the extension of Clark Road. The two-lane road extension provides a third north-south connection between Clarkona, Okoe, and McCormick Roads. The nearly one-mile stretch of road relieves traffic congestion on nearby Ingram Road and County Road 435. The $3 million project also provides a complete connection from McCormick Road to West Colonial Drive, and it creates a second entrance to the Arden Park subdivision. Additionally, the new section of Clark Road includes an eight-foot wide sidewalk that connects to the West Orange Trail. The city received an outstanding development award from our Lakefront Park Phase One development. The Florida Planning and Zoning Association recognized the city for expanding the Okohi Lakeshore Center and significant improvements made to Lakefront Park and the historic Withers McGuire House. The FPZA award highlights the redevelopment of Lakefront Park, which includes the expansive Bermuda Performance Lawn that can accommodate large community events. The award-winning green space is also designed to meet the needs of smaller events, while providing citizens with a serene space overlooking Stark Lake. The Florida Department of Health recognized the city of Okoe as a healthy community champion. The city is one of 33 communities to earn the honor for building a sustainable community and adopting planning and urban design best practices. Our fire department elevated their best practices in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic. Fire and emergency management worked diligently around the clock to ensure the health and safety of first responders and city staff. Coronavirus antibody testing was completed for police and fire personnel. In addition, the requirements for personal protective equipment were raised, and fire personnel provided masks, hand sanitizer, and disinfectant to all city employees to establish a safe working environment. Throughout the second year of providing fire-based EMS transportation, fire personnel have strived to improve service to citizens. Fire-based EMS transportation has enhanced the overall care patients receive when they call 911. EMS is a critical service provided by the city's fire department for residents, businesses, and visitors to the city of Okoye. By transporting patients to the hospital, Okoye firefighter paramedics ensure the critically ill and injured receive the highest level of emergency medical care. In the midst of a pandemic, this is needed now more than ever. In 2020, fire personnel transported more than 2,500 patients while providing them with the highest level of safety. Continuity of care and positive patient outcomes are greatly enhanced by allowing the initial responding paramedics to remain with the patient from the start of the call until they are safely received at the hospital. Fire-based EMS transportation significantly reduces the total amount of time it takes to get a patient treated and transported to the emergency room. Our police department added a valuable tool in the fight against crime the Ferro focused 3D laser scanner. This new cutting edge technology captures measurements of complex objects and buildings. It allows investigators to quickly and accurately document a crime scene beyond two dimensional measurements and photos, saving the city time and money. The scanner works by collecting millions of data points by lasers and takes photographs that can be combined with the collected data to create a full-color, three-dimensional diagram of the scene. Police department investigators will use the Feral Focus 3D laser scanner to process traffic crashes involving serious injuries and fatalities, crime scenes, mapping buildings for training, and for other appropriate uses. In the wake of several high-profile encounters between police and citizens across the country, there has been an increased demand for de-escalation. Our police department trained all of its personnel from command to the patrol officer on the principles of de-escalation. De-escalation goes far beyond just effective communication skills, but rather takes a holistic approach to creating circumstances 
where people in crisis can be afforded the opportunity to de-escalate themselves when time and conditions permit. In 2020, conditions were ideal for improvements and expansions at our Parks and Recreation Department. Construction started on the city's first dog park located at Montgomery Park. Citizens can soon bring their furry friends to a dedicated space designed just for them. And with the addition of a new playground, both children and man's best friend will have fun for years to come. There's plenty of fun at the Family Aquatic Center where new amenities include a spacious deck with chairs, recliners, and tables for guests to take a break from swimming and relax. The fitness room at Jim Beach Recreation Center was upgraded with a Star Trek treadmill and a True Force cable crossover. These upgrades continue to help the fitness room stay on pace with our citizens' fitness needs. Meeting the water needs of residents is the goal of our utilities department. Our utilities team provides and maintains quality utility services including water, sewer, and reclaimed water that meet or exceed all regulatory standards. The team is actively making green improvements to keep water conservation in mind and reduce the city's carbon footprint. The utilities team accomplished several initiatives in 2020, including the completion of phase two of the Kimball Area Water Main Upgrade Project. Currently in the final phase three, it's expected to be completed in early 2021. Residents that live in the Hemex subdivision will soon use reclaimed water for their irrigation. The expansion of the reclaimed water distribution system to the Hemex is underway. Once complete, 125 additional homes will have reclaimed water. St. John's Water Management District awarded a $131,238 cost share grant to the city for the Hemex reclaimed extension. A new paperless sewer manhole inspection program was established. It efficiently collects asset properties and conditions for future repair and budget planning. As a result, 202 manholes were inspected from September to December 2020. If an inspection determines a manhole needs to be cleaned, the city's new vacuum jet truck is perfect for the job. Staff uses the versatile VACCON truck every day to work on everything from repairing leaks from water main breaks to cleaning sewer lines. The powerful suction of the vacuum truck makes it fast and efficient, which sharply reduces the amount of time citizens have to wait while their water line is being repaired. Our Public Works Department helped keep our vehicles riding smooth. Our streets division resurfaced approximately eight miles of neighborhood streets in Rose Hill Subdivision, Orchard Park Subdivision, Roberts Rise Subdivision, Coventry Subdivision, Lake Olympia Village Subdivision, North Lakewood Avenue, Palm Drive, from Akoe Apopka Road to East Crown Point. As you can see, despite the challenges we faced in 2020, our city rose to the occasion. The state of our city is strong. I'm proud of our community for standing together, united as one. COVID-19 taught us that not only do we have to protect ourselves, we also have a duty to protect others. We look forward to 2021 with optimism and excitement.